Well, if you remember on this channel, sometime last year we were talking about the open gaming license for Dungeons and & Dragons. And one person in particular bubbled up at the very top of it all, and his name was Kyle Brink. And Kyle has now been fired by Wizards of the Coast. Well, back in January of 2023, we talked about this and I have a whole playlist on the OGL nonsense that went through Wizards of the Coast and Hasbro. This tanked their stock. This absolutely destroyed their subscription base for D&D Beyond. And Kyle Brink was in the center of all of it. He went on a podcast back quite a while ago. I actually made a giant video on this. It was a 23 minute video. And this is what he said. Uh, and so it's in my viewpoint, honestly, guys like me can't, can't leave soon enough um, for this hobby. From the Three Black Halflings podcast that was on YouTube, there's a whole interview on that. It's absolutely insane. I covered that as my own topic. The disparagingness of all of this has bubbled up with Dungeons and & Dragons, and now, of course, Kyle Brink losing his job over it. Uh, and, and in all honesty, he didn't deserve to be where he was. Now, if you go over to his LinkedIn page, he is now an independent contractor at this point, former executive producer and Dungeons and & Dragons. So, that's where Kyle Brink sits. However, out of all of this, because people found out that he got fired, he is now in protected mode for Twitter, and it's not surprising. This is the statement that he brought out back in January 18, 2023, when the OGL bubbled up. Um, pretty much saying they got everything wrong, they were wrong, they were wrong, and and please don't just, uh, cancel your subscription. I Once again, I covered this a long time ago. This is all in the wake of a debacle that has already bubbled up even further with the Dungeons & Dragons 50th anniversary coming out. And I gotta say, the disparagingness, the defamation that we are seeing in the new Dungeons & Dragons book to the old creators is so embarrassing. I believe a court of law should be throwing the book at them. This, this is something that Hasbro's been pushing for a while. They're saying that Dungeons and Dragons was created by a white guy in his basement and he was racist and he was misogynist. And they put it right into the book. It's absolutely lies. The guy's dead. Gary Gygax isn't alive. Most of the creators aren't around it anymore. And it's absolutely, completely defamatory at this point. And Honestly, if uh, Gary Gygax had an estate that could go forward with Ernie uh, being able to do something, which they can't at this point because their estate is pretty much lost, the the place where they created Dungeons & Dragons has filed for bankruptcy. They've gone through a uh, copyright lawsuit against Dungeons & Dragons and Wizards of the Coast, and that's it. It, they have nothing. They have nothing to stand on, but their own actions led to that. Where they are, though, is absolutely ridiculous. So, in the cliff notes of the book, um, it's been highlighted here by Lord Brian. So, a book I back finally came in, and it's making the original Dungeons & Dragons. And the book is all the notes. The early draft that Gary Gygax and Dave Arneson and more compiled to make this legendary game, a game I have been playing since 1994. But when I got my copy, I noticed the forward and two current employees of Wizards of the Coast, and there were two forwards. They alleged that Gygax and Arneson and the originators of this awesome hobby at TSR were all racist and sexist. Spoiler alert, not true. These two pricks who have nothing, created nothing of value, have the audacity to allege Gygax and Arneson were, are sexist and racist because they are viewing their notes through the eyes of a 2024 Wizard of the Coast Marxist who is obsessed with identity politics, i.e. the actual racist. So I took those two pages and promptly destroyed them, the rest of the book and the notes from Gary and Arneson, and they are splendid. But I find it horrible that they got these notes from the surviving family members of Gygax and Arneson. And despite the trust they were given 
From the surviving members, they treated the creators with unhorribly accusations with little to no validity whatsoever. F these activists. F Wizards of the Coast. Play first edition. And go back to the books, the old books. Go back. At least, you know, in, in 3.5, my book is sitting right here. At least in 3.5, they streamlined it so people can understand a little bit easier. But FACO was a, a much better sense of it. They created a world. And that creation of the world has now been subject of Wizards of the Coast and Hasbro completely trying to dismantle it and destroy everything that was created by Gygax and Arneson. Everything that came out. And Wizards of the Coast is taking one step at a time to destroy this. But... Is Kyle Brink's firing fixing this? None of it fixes it. What Kyle Brink did with the OGL going forward saying men like him need to leave the hobby because he was too white or everything that he believes. It's absolutely disparaging and is not the way of things. It's not the way of the world. You want to create stories? You want to create stories for everyone? Then let everybody play. But you don't need to sit there and turn around and then show your world that you need to virtue signal to everyone out there in the world that you were so welcoming and inclusive. Dungeons and Dragons, the fantasy hobbies in all fantasy right now are very inclusive. They welcome everyone in, but when they welcome everyone in, all of a sudden, it has to suit the needs of the very few that can bubble up to the top and scream the loudest. And that is what has happened here. Listen, let's take a step back here. I covered the entire debacle of the TSR, the new TSR stuff with the copyright infringement that went down, that went through court. Wizards of the Coast kind of settled out of court because they claim bankruptcy. They, Wizards of the Coast now owns anything that has to do with it lock stock and barrel there is no no conflict of interest on that anymore and the dungeon hobby shop museum that was a gygax estate that was under the control of lanasa justin lanasa who was running the new tsr after filing bankruptcy they pretty much have nothing left they have nothing to stand on they were the what what lived up to the legacy did not do anything for to try and help the situation of what Gygax built long ago. But Wizards of the Coast and Hasbro still are trying to destroy Gygax's legacy and they've left Justin Lanasa's uh, history out of it because that's the part that should be left out of it. They don't belong in part of that. They brought that upon themselves. They mishandled the legacy that was handed to them that they tried so desperately to hang on to. With Wizard of the Coast and Kyle Brink here, this doesn't change anything for Dungeons and Dragons. They've done irreparable harm to their own brand at this point. And I, it's going to take 10 to 15 years, if not longer, if Dungeons and Dragons wants to come back in any sort of re resemblance. But... There are so many other companies out there, so many more fantasy companies out there right now that Wizards of the Coast and Hasbro has pretty much lost the plot. They're, where do they go from now and from here on forward? How do they make something more in the world of Dungeons and Dragons? Well, I gotta say, some of the stuff that they're pushing forward with the new version of Dungeons and Dragons doesn't do anyone favors. They're putting people in wheelchairs in the middle of a fantasy setting where you have healing magic. They're, they're making it as, as much as possible to showcase uh, more prideful stuff in the, the Dungeons and Dragons books. And it's not pushing to a demographic or pushing to everyone out there. It's excluding many people from the hobby. A lot of people are turning away from it. And Hasbro is not standing on any legs anymore for this. They, I, at this point, I think they need to sell Dungeons and Dragons and let someone else pick it up and move away with it. Move the game to someone that can actually build this, if that's the case. There's nothing left in Dungeons and Dragons. Kyle Brink, he was just a cog in the wheel and it fell off. Maybe he's the first domino to fall, but I believe there is much more to happen with Dungeons and Dragons. 
And unfortunately, that's where we are today. Wizards of the Coast and Hasbro owning everything for Dungeons and Dragons. Yes, they can put their own disclaimers on their own works, but now they have to own that disclaimer. They're the ones that are putting that forward. They're the ones that are putting these cliff notes in the new stuff, saying that this wasn't them. They own it. They can own all of it. And if they have a problem with that, why did they buy it in the first place? If that was the case, why did they bother buying it in the first place? A idea like this doesn't stand on its own legs unless the fandom actually means something. And this is all just a virtue signal from Wizards of the Coast and Hasbro. They're trying to stand up. They're failing very, very much so. Remove the disclaimers. Stop putting those disclaimers on there because they have done actual harm to your product. They've done harm to the artist. They've done harm to a legacy that was left to many people in the fantasy genre. Everyone's just going to move away from it. Uh, Dungeons and Dragons, Wizards of the Coast, and Hasbro at this point. I'm surprised we haven't seen more things leave their side. They've done a lot of downsizing in the last little bit. We're going to see more. Thanks for watching. I'm your Prodcanine Phoenix Cinder Shadow. I'm signing off here. Have yourselves a great day. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you're very interested in this topic, go check out the two different playlists that I have. One's on the TSR files and the other one was on the OGL controversy. They are very full of much, a lot of information. I cannot stress how much information I have covered on this entirety. It's absolutely insane how much I have dove, dove into this. Thanks for watching. Have yourselves a great day.